Turn with me uh, this morning, if you would, to Romans chapter 8 and beginning in verse 30. Romans chapter 8. Beginning in verse 30, if you would please stand with me as we read from God's word this morning. Romans chapter 8 and verse 30, it says, Moreover, whom he did predestine, then he also called. Of whom he called, he also justified. And of whom he justified, then he also glorified. And then verse 31 says, And what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? For he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? For who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. And who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who hath maketh intercession for us. Verse 35 says, So who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded... That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the power, for the love, the compassion, for the truth. Of your word. I thank you for the confidence that it gives us to know that we can live each and every day that you are in control and that you have all things in your hands. I pray if there's one here today that does not know that confidence, does not know that assurance, does not know that which every day when they wake, that you are with them that they would surrender their lives to you today. They would receive the forgiveness of their sins, their hope of eternal life, and that they would know of their eternal salvation because they have cried out to you this day. Take our lives, use them for thy glory in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. (coughs) Excuse me. With everything going on in the world today, What could we possibly tell anyone that would encourage them, that would help them, that would would be there for them so that they would even just want to get out of bed (laughs) with everything going on? I hope that you have noticed a theme that has been going on. A couple weeks ago, we talked about not fearing because of what was going on in the world. Last week, we talked about the joy of the Lord is my strength. And today, we're going to continue that theme. Because it's very, very important for us to know, which we do know, but to reassure ourselves of God's plan. But even more importantly, like I said, what can you tell the world? When you are in a conversation wherever that you are and people are like, oh my goodness, this pandemic, oh my goodness, this, oh my goodness, that. And I said, not taking anything away from any problem that anybody is going through. But what should be the Christian's response? I hope after today, you'll have a little bit of ammunition. Oh, you have a lot of ammunition to be able to share with them. Look at what the scripture says in verse 31. It says, "Who shall we then say to the, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us?" The first thing you can say to them is, you know, if God is on your side, there's nobody, no thing 
that can be against you? Is there anything in this world that has ever happened throughout all of history that is too big for God? I mean, if you, that's, if you don't remember anything, just remember that. When somebody says, what are we going to do? He says, well, listen, if you had God on your side, who could possibly be against you? You remember when David went out and fought Goliath? You know, everybody was worried. You know, Saul said, put on my armor. He goes, you know, how big Goliath is. He comes out every single day. He challenges us. We cower in in fear. Nobody can go against him. Who's going to take care of this? Oh, my goodness, what a problem we have. But what did David say? David said, let me go out and fight him. I'm going to take a couple of rocks and a sling. What? Because what did David see? David saw a puny giant. David saw a mere man. David saw a problem before him that God had already handled and was definitely, was Goliath too big for God? <laughs> so David said, I'll go out. I don't need armor. All I need is this stone and a sling because God has got this. The giant looks big in the world's eyes, but in God's eyes, he's just a puny little man. And we know the end of that story. God conquered Goliath using David. And set them free. Think about this story in 1 Samuel about Elijah. I'm not going to go and read the whole thing. I think maybe you you remember it. But if uh, if you don't, 1 Samuel chapter 17, you can read through that. The whole army had arrayed against Elijah. And it was just Elijah and his servant that was there to stop them. And the servant, of course, was very scared. Just like, okay, yeah, there's you and me and this whole army. You know, how in the world are we going to get out of this? And one of the more amazing things that happens in the Bible, Elijah prayed to God and said, said, Would God, would you please open the eyes of my servant so that he may see your wonder? And God did. And the servant's eyes were open. And you know what the servant saw? The armies were still there. They had far outnumbered Elijah and his servant. You know, that's not hard to figure out. But what God opened his eyes, the army of the Lord was arrayed around them. And that army was much more than, of course, the man's army. And when it was all over, God once again had won because he is in power and he is in control. You see, if God is on your side, there's no need to fear. With God on your side, who can be against you? That God hasn't already have a plan and a purpose to take care of. No human being, no circumstance, even a pandemic cannot stop God. He is always victorious. The second thing you need to tell them and we need to be assured of in our life as well is that God gave up everything for them. God is not just somebody that's hanging around up there and pointing his fingers or things or whatever. God is personally involved in this world and in relationships with its people. And so much so, verse 32 says, that he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us. What's that next word? All, which includes all. So how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? God wants you to know that he is in charge so much that he gave up his son, Jesus Christ. Now, I spent time in eastern Kentucky, and I spent time here, and I know I've heard people say all around, well, hey, you know what? If you need something, let me know. And I know people who would give you the shirt off their own back to help. But many of them, almost everybody in here, would do exactly that same thing. You know, if I knocked on your door and I said I needed this or that or whatever, you would freely give it to me. But think what he's saying. Could I take your car? And you'd probably say, "Mm -hmm." could I take your house? (laughs) 
How about your bank account? <laughs> you said you wanted 50 bucks. Could I take your spouse? Would you give me your only son? But God did. God said, Jesus Christ is my only son. And the only way to set you free is for him to sacrifice his sinless life upon a cross in the most cruelest death that humankind has ever imagined. I will not even hold back my son for you. So when you're standing there talking to somebody about how they're going to make it in this world, does anybody really care about them? Does anybody know their name? Does anybody worry day in and day out about how they're going to get through with their job, with their marriage, with their situations, paying their bills? Does anybody really care about me? You can say, I know God cared about you so much that he gave up his only son so that you could have life and the forgiveness of your sins. God didn't even spare his son so that you could live. That's what you can share with them. The third truth that you need to share with them is that God will justify you. Verse 33 says, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Have you ever been blamed for something? I know nobody here has ever had been blamed for anything that way. Have you ever been accused of wrongdoing? You know, it, it doesn't feel good when that happens that way. You know, even whether you did it on purpose or whether you did it by accident, you know, if you've made a mistake, if you've done something wrong, you know, that does not feel good. But when we stand before God, we will stand before God condemned in our own sins. And we will know, I will know, that every single one of those sins, <laughs> however big that book is, are mine. And I committed them. And there is absolutely no way that there's anything that I can do to make up for every single one of them. You turn that book and say, yes, Vaughn did that one. Vaughn did 532. Vaughn did 3,972. I mean, you know, every single page that is turned, I did them. I can't get out of that. You cannot get out of that. We know that we would stand condemned. We will be tried and convicted and accused. There will be no way out. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us will stand condemned. The penalty of sin is death. There's no appeal. There's no chance of parole. And as they're ready to lead you away, as a child of God, God will speak. The Bible says, verse 33, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Now, of course, I'm paraphrasing and put this all together. I have no exact clue about what this is because it's going to be more magnificent than I could even say. I have justified this child of mine with the blood of Jesus Christ. And the room will be silent. If anything, if anyone can lay anything against this child of mine, speak now. Or forever hold your peace. And there will be silence throughout all eternity. Because the Bible says, verse 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, making intercession for you. It won't be because Vaughn is such a great guy. It won't be because I tell the best jokes in all the world. Let the record show that I got a few. I won't look anywhere that they came from or anything that way. 
But seriously, it won't be because of anything. It will be because of the blood of Jesus Christ. As I confess him as my Lord and Savior, as I surrender to him with my life, as I have pledged to serve him in any way possible that I can, his promise is that when I stand before God, if you do that, when you stand before God, condemned with nowhere to turn, the blood of Jesus Christ will be all that God sees and you shall be set free. Do you have anything to this point that you'd be able to share with somebody when they're worried about this pandemic and when they're worried about how they're going to get through life, when they're worried about how they're going to get their next day? See, we have something that we can share with them. It's not really, well, it is deep theological truth. But to let them know that their problem, God is bigger than their problem. To let them know that God cares so much about them that he gave his only son for them. To let them know that when this world is over, they will stand before God. But they will not be condemned because if they are a child of God, if you are a child of God, you will stand before him free because Jesus Christ will make intercession for you. Think about that. Think about that. Who shall shepherd, who shall separate us from the love of Jesus Christ, verse 35 says. And then Paul goes on, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. He says, it's written, you know, all day long I have this one problem after another and they don't seem to go away. And Paul says, but listen, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other creature. Think we can add pandemic in there? Get an amen for that. Shall be ever be ever able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ in Christ Jesus. You see, Jesus Christ died on that cross and he rose from the dead. Period. That is not maybe or could have or, or might have or things. It happened. He didn't just push that stone away and then Satan tried to push that stone back and he tried to push that stone away. No, when he rose from the dead, that stone was pushed away and he came out of that grave victorious. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Whatever you can think of, whatever crosses your mind, whatever you are going through, God has defeated it and he is victorious. No one can accuse you. No one can condemn you. No one can defeat you or separate you from God. But to claim that victory, you must be born again. You must ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. It's really that simple. Just ask him to come into your heart. Ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Ask him to come into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to apply his blood to your life and promise him that you will serve him, that you will obey him, that you will do anything in your life for him. And his promise is that nothing, pandemic included, can separate you from his love. Will you do that today? This morning we're going to have a hymn of invitation the choir is going to come and sing as well. For the, you at home, you can just bow down right where you are. You can ask Jesus Christ to come into your life. You can then share with somebody or share with me about what is going on. And we will be there and help you and love you and support you. Um, here, if you all would like to come to this altar to my side or to the front and pray, if you would like to pray with me, come. Move. Allow God to move in your life. He will be victorious as you give your life to him. Come.